Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on coaching for emotional intelligence. Uh, we've scheduled for one hour. Thanks for making it. We hope that uh, this new time uh, is more convenient for you. Uh, hopefully you're here in the, in the right place. Uh, I would just say, before I go there, um, just a, 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 a couple of uh, things quickly. If you have a question, uh, please use the Q&A. There should be a Q&A feature that you can find. Uh, please use that uh, feature and, and just type the question there. We will do some polls. We'll have some chats. Uh, uh, someone's raised their hand, and I'm just going to be very honest and tell you I don't actually see. Oh, wait, I can see now. Wait a minute. Ah, Keiko. All right. So yeah, I would just say just uh, please uh, post, your, post your questions in the Q&A and then we can answer them as they come up. Um, a couple of things about Zoom, you're, you're all muted. Uh, uh, we'll uh, allow chat at different points just because it's quite distracting as the screen goes down uh constantly it's a little bit difficult to stay on on point uh, but we hope to create as much interactivity as we can so let me just begin and if you again if you do have a question please just type it in the q a and i can look at it and there will be time at the end uh for questions and we'll take some along the way uh in this particular webinar uh i've designed quite a bit of uh interactivity into it, so we'll see. So we are Transcend. Uh, we help individuals and organizations adapt and optimize in the face of increasing pressure, stress, and overwhelm. And uh, I, was, I was talking to, with Tony Dickel, our CEO, uh, recently about just when we actually developed this point of view. Uh, it was probably uh, in uh, late uh, 2010, uh, and it was in formation before that, and, and certainly we're we're in this space now where adaptation is absolutely key um, and overwhelm is a reality. So this is me. Uh, you've seen my face already. This is uh, what, uh, who I am uh, and certainly would be delighted to talk to you after this uh, through whatever way you, you, you manage. Uh, certainly involved in, in a number of different ways within our organization. What's relevant today is uh, certainly my leadership of our coach education our academy, uh, my work as a coach, uh, work as a team coach and team coach trainer, but also emotional intelligence uh, master trainer as well uh, with an organization called Genos, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So now it would be great to find out a little bit about you. So my wonderful assistant, uh, our producer for this particular webinar, is just gonna launch a poll and you'll have, uh, I think it's about 45 seconds just to type in an answer. So love to know who you are. Uh, and just as you have a chance, please go into that. All right, look at that. Ah, okay. So quite a balanced uh, piece with, a, with the largest grouping uh, being, as of now, people that are just interested in the topic. So let's end that. Uh, you can have a look at the results. And, and see who's in the room with you. And uh, you can get an idea of, uh, of, of what it's about. And, and there is a wide range, and I'll try to do this from a wide perspective as much as possible. So who are we and, and what do we do? 
in relation to emotional intelligence and coaching. And this is uh, important, uh, obviously. So as an organization, we're pioneers in coach education, uh, online, in-person, organizational training, as well as uh, certification. Uh, we do a lot of work with internal coaches and internal coaching. Uh, so we train uh, coaches and we work with organizations as individual coaches, group coaches, team coaches, and emotional intelligence practitioners. Uh, and of course, that includes the fact that we worked very hard to make sure our organization met uh, or exceeded uh, the standards of, of the two uh, most rigorous and, uh, and, and challenging organizations to be a part of. So we're quite excited to be in this special company. Uh, you lost me, but uh, since I didn't notice, I guess we'll see. We also have spent a lot of time working on integrating coaching and emotional intelligence. So one of the ways we did that was we struck up a relationship with Genos International and became their first distributor out of Australia in 2015. And we've been training and certifying emotional intelligence practitioners uh, since then, we're also, uh, our program and our work is deeply embedded in mindfulness, but it's specifically related to cultivating emotional and mental balance. And that relates to mindfulness-based stress reduction. And if you don't know what that is, uh, that's fine. I, I have a look and just look up MBSR and you'll find some interesting things. Uh, but essentially it's a, it, it's this movement toward that. And then we created a four balances coaching methodology, which we train in our advanced levels. And, uh, and we integrate emotional balance as a key element of that. And that's significant a little bit later on as we talk about how we work with people around this area of emotional intelligence. So now we'll get a little bit more specific and find out what interests you about this topic. So again, Mia will launch that poll and we'll find out uh, what's, what your specific interest might be. So develop your own EI, that's about yourself. Uh, learn how to coach would be a skill. Uh, being trained in EI might be a certification or being trained in coaching uh, would be another option there for you. Wow, there we go, great effort. Okay, very interesting, actually. Oh, there's still a few more people just coming in in the, in the wire here. I'll stop this uh, in just a moment. All right, and we'll just share the results with you. So you can see that uh, definitely there's this strong sense of learning to coach for EI. 59%, uh, that's, that's great. Um, this is a a pretty big topic and there's a, a lot of uh, specialization involved and I'll try to give you a really good picture of some of the ways that we do it uh, and that should help you also as you think about how to develop what your own emotional intelligence which also it would be a, a bit of a prerequisite to learn how to coach but uh, and helping others uh, develop EI as well so very interesting thank you very much for for sharing that So just a quick note before we get too far into things, like this is a big part of what we do. And we would love to talk to you if you're interested in finding out more about how you can develop your EI through coaching, how you can learn to integrate emotional intelligence more completely into your coaching, uh, and certainly anything that we could work with you in helping your organization. Uh, also, we have a number of certifications and programs coming up. 
uh, and we've uh, done a lot of work online. Uh, we'll be able to do some work in person in Hong Kong uh, coming up uh, next week. We're able to begin to do some smaller group work with people. We're excited to begin to get face to face again. But we do have uh, all these programs and there's a special offer uh, for the first 10 registrations. So there's an email address there that you can uh, lay a hold of if you want and we will certainly follow up as well after. So commercial finished. Um, emotional intelligence, I'd be really curious to know what, you, what do you know about emotional intelligence? So uh, what I've asked uh, our producer Mia to do is just open up the chat for you at this time. So you'll be able to chat. There should be a, you should be able to click a few dots and, and there should be a chat feature that emerges for you. And I'd love for you just to type in quickly some of the things that you know about emotional intelligence. It'll give us a bit of a starting point and also I can build on, on what you know in terms of explaining it a little bit further. So whenever you're ready, just begin to chat. Okay. All right, so clearer future and inspirational, smarter with feelings, self-awareness, intentional choices, empathize, understand others, owns emotions, impact on oneself and others, nice. It's how you interact with other people. It's definitely a big part of it. Emotionally literacy, emotional literacy, how to navigate, core skill of all human beings, definitely it is. Uh, consequential thinking. Yeah. About self-awareness, managing emotions and feelings and actions. Yeah, you're, 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 there's definitely a, a picture emerging that's pretty close to, to, to what, uh, how we would work with that. All right, well, you'll have another opportunity a little bit later. Uh, and I want you to begin to think about the question that we'll ask a little bit later about different types of cases that you might think that people would come to coaching for. So um, let me just pause for a moment and just say, well, emotional intelligence, uh, a, a key thing. Ah, we have a question. Uh, again, I. Uh, things happening. So emotional intelligence, one, one thing that's, that's important for you to understand is that emotional intelligence is a skill. So for a long time, the, the, the people thought that, Q, that, that emotional intelligence was like a fixed amount, that you either had it or you didn't have it, and how much you had depended on hereditary environment, etc. Um, what neuroscience has done, uh, you know, probably about 10 years ago and certainly work in emotional intelligence is reveal that emotional intelligence is a skill, just like any other skill. It is an ability. We all have it and it can be developed. And that's really, really key. Uh, emotional intelligence can be developed and there are, you know, disagreements on what the competencies are. We have a framework that we're, we're happy with, that we work with. Uh, but certainly it's something that can be developed and it has to do with our ability to understand, work with, reason with our emotions and the emotions of others. Uh, and, and it's a whole set of skills around that. So it, it'll make more sense as I explain a little bit about how we work with emotional intelligence in coaching. So here's some ways that we, 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 we do it. Uh, and we like to look at coaching through one of the things that we've developed called the coaching spectrum. So we'll go into a little bit more depth uh, after a little while. But essentially, when we work with people in emotional intelligence, we may work with them developing skills of emotional intelligence. 
okay? So this is like, a, it might be skills of noticing their own emotions. It might be skills related to self-awareness. We also work with people in the area of performance of, in, in their set of skills or competencies around emotional intelligence, where people have some, but they want to improve it. So they might have the ability to empathize, but maybe not with all people or in all contexts, or they feel they're empathetic, yet people don't always perceive that they are. So this can be a performance kind of idea where their goal is actually to enhance their ability to be more empathetic. And then in the development area, it could be, I wanna develop my emotional intelligence as a whole, like as a set, but normally we wanna help focus their development on some core emotional intelligence competencies, like foundational ones like self-awareness or others awareness. But we might move into areas like emotional self-management and even further into becoming uh, more transformational might, might be something like, I want to achieve a level of emotional balance. And this could also fit with things like resilience and other you know, current hot topics around that. Um, so the, 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 a real question to begin to think about is, is there anything that we could develop in the coaching sphere that didn't involve some level of emotional intelligence competency? Uh, and and it, it might be a challenge to find something. But that's a very general overview. Let me just get a little bit more specific and you can see some of the ways that we work with people. So first of all, uh, let's just lay out the emotional intelligence competencies as defined by Genos International. Now, these were developed through a factor study, which was part of original research into the measurement of emotional intelligence and led to the development of the Genos organization and all their instruments. And essentially, um, they looked at every single measurement that existed in terms of emotional intelligence, what it measured, how it measured it, what were the common factors, what were the definitions, and began to develop a skill-based, and really they're the first to do this, a, a developmental skill-based um, assessment uh, for workplaces. So all their research was done uh, at work and its application is in leadership and, when, and in the workplace. So the six competencies you can see there, self-awareness, other awareness, which are foundational for all the others. Authenticity is about really how, what level am I genuinely true to myself and related really to communication? Or in what ways am I inauthentic? Or maybe I'm untrustworthy because there's a, there's a gap between what it looks like or what it feels like I'm feeling and what I'm saying or what I'm doing. So this is really about lining up our presence, uh, our, our executive presence, even our deportment with our emotional uh, array of things that are happening. Emotional reasoning might be a new phrase to many of you, and that's really about incorporating and getting the most out of emotional data in decision-making and in communicating decisions. So emotional data might be things like the level of motivation in the organization, the amount of stress that people are under, the amount of pressure that people feel, and this may impact either how I communicate a decision or when we make the decision or when and how we announce a decision uh, or how I communicate and involve people in the decision-making process. Uh, so this can be about engagement and all sorts of things. Self-management has you know, a number of dimensions. So uh, the first is uh, we might think of self-control and this is, in a moment, am I able to help myself uh, control the impact of my emotions on, on what I say and do and how I react? Can also be self-management in terms of just creating a healthier emotional life for myself. And it can also be self-management in, in the fact that as, and many of us are leaders, that we need to 
manage ourselves in a way because we have a massive impact on others in the organization. And, uh, and that makes a big difference. So we need to manage the way we present ourselves. And then inspiring others, this can be about um, uh, being a, having a positive influence on others, but also impacting and inspiring performance in others. So how do we inspire people? And, and one of you mentioned even in your thoughts about emotional intelligence, this ability to inspire is a, bit, a big part of it, connect with others. So now what I wanna do is connect skillful coaching with emotional intelligence and not competency each on their own, but more of an array or the full set of competencies. So one of the ways that we work with this in coaching is that coaches need to be skilled at developing in a trust, a high level of trust and psychological safety for their clients. So emotional intelligence is a key skill for coaches. And it's also something that our clients might want to develop as they lead and manage others on teams or as individuals. So we, in our coach training processes, certainly help and pay significant attention to issues of, of, of helping coaches be more skillful with trust and creating psychological safety so clients can really explore. And, and most clients will stay pretty tactical, pretty skill oriented if they don't feel a sense of trust. So that's a, a, key, a key foundational idea. The other, or the second way that we work with this is in a process that we've developed, which we call the well-formed goal process. And one of the factors of a well-formed goal includes um, what we would call an, an emotional connection to our goals. And goals that remain in our minds in moments of choice, goals that are available to the mind when the pressure's on, when we're under stress, uh, are goals that are connected to our emotional senses, right? So we want to feel some pull toward this, some attraction, some emotional connection to our goal. Uh, goals that are not emotionally connected aren't uh, as re mem memorable for people in the process of their journeys and development. So the wealth and goal process, we also do this. And, and we have a large focus as an organization is something that we like to call actionable self-awareness which is really, again, related to self-awareness uh, and, and uh, in many ways, other awareness as well. And this is helping people process and understand some interesting phrases. So the ways of feeling. So this isn't just what I feel, but how I feel things. Um, how, do, how, do, how do feelings happen for me? And what emotions do they create? And what emotional states do they create? And what moods do they create? And, and, and where in that pathway uh, can I make a different choice or find some sense of control? So the ways of feeling are key. But then also ways of thinking. And we don't tend to think of thinking as something that's emotional. However, the ways we feel impact the way we think. And the way we think impacts the way we feel. So we could feel um, like we've been uh, misunderstood. And that means that the way we think is, is either I need to be understood or uh, nobody understands me, which then creates another emotion potentially, which then creates another thought and the cycle sort of carries on until we find ourselves in a state. So we really help people to understand and empower people to learn how to, how to really manage their sense of, of thoughts and feelings, but really become aware of the role that feelings and thoughts have in intertwining with each other and, and creating states, um, and, uh, and you know, relating to decisions, relating to motivation to work, relating to how I communicate with other people. And uh, so really helping clients to, to create a high level of self-awareness that they can act on. Now the last phrase there is, is ways of being, which uh, in the 
uh, the iceberg that we use, we would have ways of feeling and thinking above ways of being with ways of being, being, being close to the enduring core of who we are. And this relates to like the seat of meaning for us. What, what gives us meaning? What's our orientation to meaning? What are our values? What are our beliefs? And, and how do they impact how we feel and how we think? And, and, and which, which of those take precedence in our mind? Um, if my value of being recognized is offended, then that will create a feeling and thoughts that then create feelings and thoughts. So there's this whole process that we're really helping clients to understand and develop skill um, in managing. And that leads to this self-management, um, which is different than the general self-management, which was really about that, that full set as I described. This is really, we tend to look at this and, and, and say that, that in, in moments of choice, uh, crucial moments of choice, if we can be more skillful in managing ourselves, then we can choose to take action that leads to the goals that we desire. So that array of self-management around control and my lifestyle um, and, uh, uh, and, and even what I need to be for the sake of others, then in moments of choice, we want to be able to become quite skillful in activating and accessing that. So we help people to deconstruct emotional incidents. We work with ep emotional episodes. Uh, we work with uh, what are the goals that are emerging? What are the goals that your emotions have? Uh, and, and, what is, and, and how does that impact the choice that you have? Uh, all designed to help people. So in a crucial moment of choice, when they have an opportunity maybe to make progress toward their goal or at least not create a problem, for themselves that they're able to do that. So helping people be more skillful in moments of choice, recruiting the power of their emotions in order to help them make quality choices that lead toward goals. And then at the final level, uh, at a very deep level, uh, we work with helping people to self-transform. And this is movement toward this uh, wonderful place of emotional balance where there's this high level of actionable self-awareness, foundation uh, of practices that uh, enable us to be exceptionally aware of what's working, what's happening with us and others. And in moments where it's called for to have that exceptional emotional and mental balance, which leads to all sorts of high range outcomes uh, like well-being, like resilience, uh, like uh, consistent and enduring performance in, in areas of, of interest and concern. So those are some of the parts of the coaching process where we would uh, gradually train our coaches to higher and higher levels of skill until they're able to help clients you know, at that transformational level to cultivate emotional balance in service of their goals and in service of, uh, of their well-being. So some pretty heavy stuff. So let's open up the chat again. And what I wanted to do was have you uh, answer this question. What are some common outcomes people want from coaching? And then what I would like to do is then take that and begin to look at, uh, from based on what you say, uh, choose a couple of cases and talk about what are the places where we would look at helping people develop emotional intelligence in service of whatever those outcomes might be. So as soon as you're able and ready, um, please uh, put some ideas into the chat uh, of what are some common outcomes that people want from coaching? This is like, why would they hire a coach? What do they want to leave with? What do they want to get out of the coaching sessions with? And, uh, and, and, and you'll find that most of those have an emotionally intelligent connection. All right. 
So thank you, thank you, Lara, um, for your idea here. All right, so let's go. Okay, being uh, better. Okay, so let me just read out a few of these and see. Um, being better able to manage emotions when triggered, resolving or resolutions to their emotions, seeing possible solutions to problems, work effectively, beat procrastination, leaders struggling with perceived image of arrogant and rigid, uh, being the best they want to be, skills to manage their reaction to stress, uh, to give feedback on their blind spots, in this case, emotional intelligence, uh, have some light to their concerns. Okay. So this is a beginning. And uh, maybe what I'll do is, uh, let, me, let me talk about a few of these that are quite common for us. And I'll give you some layers on how we uh, do that. So I'll attend to some of the newer messages a little bit later. Uh, but I'll begin with this first one on uh, uh, being better able to manage emotions when triggered. Now, this is a very common one. It comes up really, really often in, in people. Very often, people are quite skillful at managing their emotions. But there are certain contexts. Oh, did you lose me? But there are certain contexts. Let's see if that works. There are certain contexts where it's it's really really uh, difficult. So what we would do in a case of of this is we would work with people to help them to figure out. What's happening with this trigger that they're having? So the idea is we would deconstruct a context where they were triggered through, you know, skillful questioning and begin to look at what, what, what's this, the context around that emotional event and also asking them to be really clear on how they would like to show up in that moment. So this is also about being the best they want to be. And this might be about blind spots. Um, so helping them understand the context, helping them to understand their internal context, what's happening with them, helping them to understand and develop awareness around the impact on others and the impact on progress to their goals. Sometimes even recruiting their values in service of their emotional self-management and all of that sort of process would be, again, creating a high level of actionable awareness, connecting that to meaningful outcomes, and then beginning to help the client to understand and develop some resources for the moment. So this would be in the process of helping the client as they're designing um, the things they're gonna do in between sessions, their own work, their action steps, um, could involve practices uh, that are designed to help them experiment with ways they can manage their state more effectively, and also definitely in the moment. So that's a, a number of ways that we, we, we work with that. Um, and that's usually very contextual, very self-control orientated. Got it? And, and this, this similar process would also be what we work with when it's dealing with their reactions to stress, when they have a lot of concerns, um, uh, is, is a big part uh, of the whole uh, package or when they have hijacks. So, you know, these are really the moments where we're just not at our best. Uh, you know, I had one recently this, this week with one uh, of, of our team members where I was frustrated with something. And uh, in a moment, um, uh, you know, this, this individual uh, uh, just sort of avoided responsibility around something. And I, uh, and I reacted in a way that, uh, that uh, wasn't 
super inappropriate, but certainly wasn't my normal, uh, calm, relaxed kind of way. And of course it had uh, an impact on the other individual that I didn't want to have. So again, that's a, that's a challenge for us uh, all the time, a constant challenge to, to uh, manage our impulses and uh, to recall who it is we want to be, and recall how important this person is and uh, being able to help them to, to get through. Let me go to this other one, which is interesting. Uh, uh, Jacqueline uh, writes, seeing possible solutions to problems that they might have. And someone else had something guided in the actions they're taking, finding more direction. This is a part where it's interesting because we, we often don't think of our emotions affecting our ability to see possible solutions. And one of the key aspects of the science of emotional intelligence is that when we're in what's called a approach state, so this is an open state, we're more expansive, we're more resourceful, we see more options, we see more solutions. So in the coaching context, that trust and psychological safety is designed to create the environment where our clients feel like they can explore solutions that they couldn't see in the moment. This is why many of you have the very common experience of something happening in a meeting or a discussion and you can't think of anything to say. And then five minutes later, you're walking down the hall, you're going to the toilet, you're getting some coffee, and all of a sudden, all these ideas come into your mind of what you could have done. Well. The problem is you couldn't have done them in the moment because you were in a threat state, more of a contracted state, especially during conflict. And, and that means you, you just couldn't see those solutions because they weren't available to you. So again, for you to shift your skill level, we want you to work toward developing some skills in emotional self-management. And again, working with like a trigger. This is the emotional balance process, where we're really helping you to figure out by deconstructing that emotional episode, what, what, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What, what's happening with you? And how is that impacting your ability to see other solutions and other possibilities? And, and that's a real powerful way to help people. So emotional intelligence is a big part of that. Let me just take one more. Hopefully this is uh, connecting uh, with some of you. There's one that I saw I wanted to, which was different. Uh, leaders struggling with the perceived image of arrogant and rigid. Uh, thanks for that interesting uh, case. Um, again, this is, this is pretty common, but I, I, I wanna generalize it slightly and say, Leaders struggling with perceived images uh, is the key that they, that they don't want. So they're perceived as arrogant or rigid. They might be perceived as reactive. They might be perceived as temperamental. They might be perceived as rude. They might even be perceived as being bullies or being hostile. Um, um, and so this particular space is very interesting because uh, the, what, the situation that Arpita has, has produced here is the idea of it is the perception of others that is the important thing. So this is about understanding how our actions are perceived by others. So again, we would, we would really want to explore in an atmosphere of, of psychological safety, one, what is the well-formed goal of this leader? What is their preferred image? How do they want to be perceived? We would also want possibly to find out how they are perceived. So in a case like this, we might actually look at doing, uh, using one of our 360 instruments, uh, Emotional Intelligence 360, to get some data around how other raider groups actually perceive this leader. That might be useful. 
um, we might be able to have some interviews uh, or we might be able to challenge them to ask uh, for feedback or feed forward from some of the people that are important to them. So we really need to met, deal with the gap between who I think I am and who you perceive me to be. And, and that means I need to begin to cultivate a strong level of, of self-awareness and other awareness. And this really takes that into the realm of when I say that in this way, people might take it this way, depending on their emotional state depending on my emotional state. So again, there's this context specificness of it. And in this case, uh, I've worked with one client that's in a similar context as this, and it, it really came down to their, their use of language. So again, we, we help them to become really aware of, of, of how they spoke. So the words they chose, how they said them, that's really key. And in this case, um, the leader was genuinely caring, but that was hidden beneath sort of a veneer that they'd created, you know, in order to survive in the corporate world. And they needed to, to cultivate ways of, of having that genuine, sincere um, way of, of feeling about their team come out a little bit more. So they had to actually let go of some of the, the things that were self-protective and open up and be slightly more vulnerable. Um, and and this, what, this changed what we call where they were saying things from. So we began to work with not only the words they used, so what they said, how they said it, and then where it came from. Uh, so instead of coming behind a self-protective wall, it came from a place of vulnerability, right? And that shifted uh, their perception in the organization. So lots of, of wonderful things. Uh, maybe just quickly, I'll answer the, 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 the last one, accountability Andy had put in, which is interesting as well. Um, this would be like, our, you know, a question that I love to ask as a coach around accountability to clients would be, what is your relationship with accountability? And what this question does is really gives us uh, access to their sort of emotional relationship with accountability. I love it. I hate it. I feel pressured when I'm under accountability. I don't like to be held accountable. Uh, or whatever. So we get this preferences and biases, and that enables us to, again, help them to figure out in what ways does accountability put you into a threat state? Or what ways does it put you into an approach state? And, 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 and how do you want to be perceived? And how, uh, and who are you? Uh, and, 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 and often people that don't like accountability are super responsible people. Uh, who, when they are accountable for something, they, they really take it on really heavily. Like they put it on their shoulders and they carry the weight. And other people, when they're accountable, they, they don't like to be pressed because they want to feel free or duck and dodge. Um, and some people want to avoid it. But all those are, are really emotional reactions to accountability. And it's useful for us to help people explore that. So there's some cases. Uh, but I really wanted to finish uh, now give you, giving you some ideas of how we might work with it. I'd love to just have a conversation with you if you have some questions. Uh, please type them in to the, the Q&A. Uh, no one's used it. I'm a little wondering if it's either not working or you don't know where to find it. Um, but if, uh, if, if that's not working, then maybe we'll just open the chat and invite you to put some questions in there. Uh, I'm not sure, Mia, I'll leave it up to you to decide what the best way is uh, as we move toward uh, finishing. Uh,
Ah, someone put a question in. Ah, okay. That's a very technical question, Luan. Can you comment between the Genos assessment and the EQI assessment, please? So I am I'm gonna to have to ask you to clarify. Um, EQI, remind me, this is, I believe this is Daniel Goleman's instrument. Can you just clarify that one? Cause I'm just, it's not catching in my brain at this moment. Uh, here's, here's what I would probably be able to say, uh, uh, about this because I'm pretty sure this is this is Daniel Goldman's new EQI that came out I think last year or the year before. Um, so what is the intention of the tool? So Genos' tool was developed primarily uh, with a no, primarily only with a focus on workplace application. So the research was very specific to work and very specific to leadership. So the norming of the uh, groups uh, and of the assessment happened in that context. So that, that's really key, and that's a differentiator where most of the other EQ or EI instruments are also uh, are, are more general. So they're developed to be used in, in other contexts, often by psychologists, often uh, in, in, uh, in other, other scenarios. Um, Genos's tool was also developed with a specific focus on developing emotional intelligence. So not measuring it, how much you have, um, uh, do you have it, how much do you have, but really it's, it's set up as a tool that works with um, what are the areas in which you have opportunities to improve your emotional intelligence? And what are the strengths that you have in emotional intelligence that can be leveraged in other areas of, uh, of need within the organization? Um, and the EQI has four domains and uh, Genos has six. Uh, and they've added that uh, dimension of emotional reasoning and also this um, um, uh, inspires performance, uh, idea for leaders um, and, and positive influence for, for people at the workplace level. Um, so those are, those would be some differences that I would, I would see clearly at this stage. Um, but that's, that's my best answer at this moment. Thank you for your question. Okay. I need to say that I'm done. Any other questions? coming through in any particular space. If not, and people still hang around, then I might answer or, or take another case study idea and begin to develop that uh, for you just to take one more. I can't really see if you're typing or not. Ah. Welcome. So um, maybe I'll just comment on one, one other thing that was put into the chat, which was this whole idea. And if you have a question, feel free to put it in. We have uh, about five minutes left. Um, someone wrote a, a self-awareness that is slowly igniting. And, and I really like the way this was phrased by uh, Miriam um, because yeah, most self-awareness doesn't, isn't an explosion in our minds. Uh, usually that's a bit too much for us. So in the coaching relationship, we have the opportunity to create awareness over time in a trusting, psychologically safe environment of, of what's really happening with me or what's really happening with a client. 
and it is a slow process, but it tends to speed up. That's the beautiful of ignition, right? There's this, it's, it's, it's sort of like a, you know, it's starting, it's starting, it's starting, and then it goes on fire and then it warms up and then it becomes warmer and it burns hotter, right? So this is this pro process of, of lighting a fire or starting an engine, uh, whatever that happens to be. Is, is it is slowly igniting and very often people that are are blind or have their blind spots as someone else wrote they they, they don't know what they don't know they they honestly might be ignorant about that self-awareness um, and I'll just share from my own experience when I uh, worked in a large corporate organization uh, when I first moved to Hong Kong uh, with a bunch of, of, of very local people that I hadn't really been exposed to when I lived in Malaysia. Um, uh, some people experienced me as, and I got the feedback that I was intimidating. And it was certainly not my intention to intimidate anyone. Uh, but I needed to explore this idea of what's, and I was first of all just hurt that they were intimidated which of course didn't help. Um, but also I, I needed to really understand what was happening. So I, I really had to seek feedback from a few trusted people to find out what, what is this about? Is it, is it the way I conduct myself in meetings? You know, what are the kinds of things that I'm doing that are affecting people in this way? And, and some of the things I learned were actually you know, very unexpected. Uh, if, if you know me, I, I'm, I'm quite tall. I'm like 1.88 meters um, uh, and, and, and a reasonably, reasonably healthy, large individual. So people were intimidated by my height, but they were also intimidated by the fact that I stood too close to them, which again, I, I wouldn't have known. Um, so this was, this was again, you know, again, creating a level of awareness. Um, I also found that you know, I, 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 I speak very, you know, most of the time, maybe not this moment, but reasonably clearly, my, my, my language is good, my diction is good, and, and, and they were English as second language. So they felt intimidated by my use of the English language, and I used words that they didn't understand. So all of this began to make me feel, okay, these are things I can actually work, really work on and adapt. Um, but also through that experience, I, I was exploring how I thought about them and me. And did I have a, a bias? Did I have an us and them uh, mentality in my mind? Was something happening at that level? And I needed to be introspective and really think about that. Um, and I also looked at how I acted under times of stress. Um, uh, when I was hungry. I tended to be more intimidating, I found out. So uh, one of my project managers, she uh, had a cue. She would just walk up to me when I was being grumpy and I didn't know it and offer me um, a gummy bear. <laughs> and that was her signal to me that I was being grumpy. And, uh, and, th and that became a bit of a code that we had that, that helped me and helped her as well. So that's the slowly igniting you know, sort of self-awareness where I was initially completely unaware. And, and through the process of feedback and coaching and, and, and experimenting with behaviors and caring enough to ask questions, which was supported by my coach, I was then able to adjust my behaviors, develop a sense of humor about it even, and, and hopefully become more skillful. So hopefully that's an example of, of how a self-awareness ignites and how coaching can, a coach can skillfully partner with someone through that journey uh, and, and move along that way. So there you go. Well, if there's no more questions, I'm happy to release you to your evenings a little bit early. Uh, just a quick reminder, we'd love to talk to you about what you're thinking about, how you might apply this, and certainly you can contact Academy at Transcend International, if you're interested in a program, register at Transcend. So we'd be delighted to hear from you. 
uh, you will get emails from us uh, since you registered for this and we're, we'd be happy to have a dialogue and uh, help you to discover things. Um, and this is part of a series. There's many more of these coming up, so please sign up for more. And uh, some of you I, I have a relationship with already, so, so feel free to reach out with me, uh, to me uh, in the context where we know each other, and I'm happy to, to help with that. So thank you so much, and uh, looking forward to uh, you growing in your emotional intelligence and in your ability to help others. Thank you so much. And uh, just leave things open for a few minutes. And uh, if you have a question, feel free to type it in and I'll try to answer it. You're welcome very much. Oh. All right, have a good evening and we'll definitely see you in the near future, hopefully.